Hey guys, David Franklin here. Uh, doing a little se segment with Cartersville Uncut about our recent budgetel crisis here in Bartow County. And uh, ladies, we've had a crisis. Uh, if you hadn't read about it or heard about it, let me just bring you up to speed. One of our hotels that has a lot of extended stay people, uh, government shut them down, health violations, all that kind of stuff, gave them 24 hours and they had to be out. And so I'm actually here with Kelly Whitmire and Janet Queen, a couple of our local community heroes, because ladies, y'all y'all been uh, at ground zero <laughs> working with these people. <laughs> Kelly, have you slept at all? A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> the, listen, let, let, me, let me introduce it. All right, Kelly, tell us who you are and exactly what your position is with uh, our county school system. I'm Kelly Whitmire. I'm the homeless liaison for our school system. I'm also the foster care point of contact, so I work with our kids who are in foster care. And then I'm kind of everything else community, all those other duties that's yep. assigned. And y'all, the reason I know Kelly is because we get to go to a bunch of meetings together and we actually collaborate. And Janet Queen, the the uh, Queen of Bartow County from Taylorsville, introduce, <laughs> introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Janet Queen, and today I'm representing Mission Bartow. And we're very excited to have an opportunity to uh, let people know what uh, what our situation is. As you said, David, we are in a crisis here. Yeah. yeah. And y'all, it's not like we have not known about this situation. Matter of fact, Kelly, uh, there was a group of uh, teachers from Clear Creek where a lot of these kids go to school. They've been up there working and stuff like that. They, I'm going to tell you, those teachers have been heroes. Yeah, we have a lot of our teachers and staff and nearby churches and other people who are out in that budget tail and have been in that budget tail for years working with these families, trying to get resources to them, trying to help them to help themselves and to get out of that budget tail and find a, a different way of life. And Janet, you've been very much a part of that also because you and I have worked, I mean, through Splash Bartow, through all kinds of stuff. Mission Bartow, you mentioned that. I've helped coordinate some of the churches and but there's been a bunch of ministries that have been up there. We've taken people up there. Uh, for approximately the last 18 months, you know, several ministries here in Bartow County have been involved. This summer we did a summer camp there with the children and some of the adults at the budget tail. You know, we, we came in and we did the summer feeding program to make sure these uh, children were fed during the summer. And it's, it's been a very humbling experience to see how these people have uh, responded to kindness. Yeah. Now, y'all, I know these two ladies, and they don't, they would never brag on themselves, but, but I'm going to brag on both of them because they have been great. Janet, you actually had a little, uh, help do a little job fair up there, and some of the people got work, and I mean, just that kind of stuff. That's exactly right. And we've been up there working long term to try to help this. That is right. And so, y'all, we, we've known about this. We've been trying to, to do things. Our community has been absolutely great. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Kelly, matter of fact, uh, Ultimately, your boss, Dr. Philip Page, superintendent, he called me the first time I heard about it. He called me, and you know, it's just a great thing when you start seeing education and faith community and businesses work together. So listen, we'll, we'll be right back. I want to take a break, but we'll be back back cause, uh, and kind of bring everybody up to speed on what happened last Wednesday to now and kind of what we're working on right now. So we'll be right back. Everybody, this is Kelly Jones with Kennesaw Transportation and I have a job for you. We are always looking for good over-the-road drivers. We have teams, we have solos, uh, we have a two-day orientation that pays you $400, a $2,500 sign-on bonus, and we have a $10,000 seniority bonus for every five years. If you're looking for a new career, we can help you. If you're looking to change jobs, we can help you. Give me a call. Can't wait to hear from you. Thanks. Hey Cartersville, it's finally feeling like fall here in North Georgia. The temperature is falling and we have hot deals here at Treasure Chest Outlet. Rustic is hot right now. We have dining tables, we have sofa tables, console tables, you name it in Rustic, we've got it. Also, football's in full swing. Hey, the family's going to be coming by for that Thanksgiving dinner. You're going to need somewhere for them to sit. We have a large selection of sofas. We just got a big load in. Hey, we sell you a sofa love for what most people just sell you a sofa for. We're located at 927 North Tennessee Street. Come on by and see us. You just never know what you're going to find here at Treasure Chest Outlet. Hi, I'm Joshua Goodman with Elite Stone Supply. We sell everything from hardscaping, landscaping, stone, Husqvarna equipment, and Premier Portable buildings. We can make them from 6x10 all the way up to 16x40. We make 
garden sheds, garages, cabins, barns, anything you can think of, we can make it happen. Do you need to store Christmas stuff? Do you need to store a lawnmower? We can take care of that. Do you need to get away? Do you need a, uh, a pool house by your pool? We can make it happen. Come check us out at Elite Stone Supply. Hey guys, David Franklin back with Kelly Whitmire from Homeless Liaison with the School and Janet Queen, Mission Bartow and Janet, you do a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, we're talking about this recent crisis, Budgetel, and uh, on Tuesday, the health department went in and closed it down and said you got to Wednesday to, to get out. Kelly, you, what was your first call now? Uh, well, I received a phone call from... Um, someone from the fire department giving me a heads up about someone that I knew through Shop with a Hero and some yeah. other things saying, hey, this is what's happening. You might want to be aware and know. And then I received a um, phone call from the health department asking if I could meet everybody up there because a lot of folks from the community um, were coming together to try to figure out a plan for what we were going to do to try to help these folks. And, and these kids are in, a lot of our kids are in, in the school system. How many kids were at Budget Hill that are in our school system? Uh, there were about 50-ish 50-ish school-age children, but there were 87 children total, total. living in the budget. Because not everybody was school-age. Mm. And that's a lot of families, isn't it? So so when uh, you walked in, what, what did they what did they do to you? Just look at you and say, <laughs> you're in charge? Not, not in so many words, but it, it became apparent <laughs> that people were hoping I had a plan. <laughs> On the cuff, right? Yes. And, and Janet walked in, and what was your response to seeing Janet? Thank God you're here. <laughs> Is it because because there really was not a plan other than to condemn it and these people end up homeless, right? Right. I think I think some phone calls had been made, um, but I think it's important to say that if you don't do this every day like I I do, you think that okay, we'll pull together and we'll find money and we'll find places for these people to go and they'll have a new place and everything will be okay. And then as you start calling the places that come to mind, like the shelter or it's different full. extended stays, you realize that the shelter stays full. They do the best they can. You know, they're always working and working and working, but they stay full. They can only accommodate so many people. And that the list of extended stays, other options in the community, those are full too. Yeah. So so what did you ladies do when y'all realized y'all were going to have to <laughs> be on the point for this kind of stuff? Well, I think when you've been the director of 911 here, everybody thinks that you're emergency ready. <laughs> and, you know, that, that there's a lot to be said for that as well. And, you know, like Kelly said, when I walked in and she was there, I knew she knew how this process could flow. And so between all of us, we had great expertise there in the room. And as Bartow County always do, does, everybody compiled their resources, and we were able by dark that afternoon to have somewhat of a plan somewhat put together plan. because you know as it stands right now this is new to Bartow County there's not been a, a situation like this so hopefully moving forward we can develop a policy and procedure about how to handle this when it happens again yeah because it chances are it will happen again yes, chances are well I know that uh Kelly I knew you were up there working Janet I called you mm -hmm. and you went up there and so what I did was uh we were talking about where are people going to stay because we knew there was a so I actually walked next door to the uh, from my office to the Quality Inn and talked, met Rabish for the first time and just started asking and sent something out to all of our churches that said, hey, listen, if you'd like to sponsor a family, and the response has been overwhelming. Our, mm -hmm. our community, listen, guys, I keep telling you all this. I've lived in three different states and multiple places. This community has a special place and a special heart. Absolutely. I said myself um, to somebody that this would not have happened no. in another county. That's right. In two days, we had all of those people with a place to go for the week, and we also had kids back in school, going back to the schools that they had came from on a school bus. Listen, y'all, make sure you catch that. So, Janet, one of the things was like, okay, we don't want anybody out on the street. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, we got to come up with enough money. And it wasn't just the faith community, because I'm telling you, there's some yeah. nonprofits, some business people that just were incredible. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's no way to list everybody, y'all. You know, but uh, we knew we knew that by really tomorrow the, on Wednesday morning they were they had to leave at 12. We knew that there was going to be a place to stay, and that everybody had an option to not be homeless that night, sleep That's outside, right. they right. sheltered it. And we started with kids first That's and made right. sure. And uh, so, and y'all, you know, the, the situations up there, you know, some of them are really really tragic. 
Yeah. I mean, and, and people, Janet, some of those people have gotten jobs That's and we're doing better because we were up there helping. That's exactly so, right. so listen, when we come back, I'm going to ask these ladies a question because they've been working this morning, uh, visiting families. Okay, what do we do next? And so that's going to be the question. Listen, we'll be right back. Thank you. SOS Mattress, best quality, best price, guaranteed. Where can you find a huge selection of high-end mattresses without paying high-end prices? SOS Mattress, best quality, best price, guaranteed. Where can you save 50 to 80% off retail every day? SOS Mattress, best quality, best price, guaranteed. We offer the lowest prices on the best name brand mattresses. SOS Mattress and Clearance Center on Highway 41 in Cartersville, one block south of Home Depot. Hey, I'm Bria at the Herb Shop of Cartersville. I wanted to talk to you all about CBD. I know you've probably heard about it. There's so many people that are benefiting. A lot of my customers come in and it helps them with arthritis, pain, chronic migraines, even sleep disorders, anxiety, daily stress. And it comes in cream form, capsule form, and water-soluble liquid. We only carry two lines because we want to use the highest quality out there for you. So come in, try it, give me your feedback, get a brochure, and educate yourself about quality CBD hemp oil. I'm Glenda Mitchell with Glenda Mitchell Law Firm. If you've been involved in an accident, give me a call. Let me help you. I give every client my personal cell phone number so you can call or text me anytime. Glenda Mitchell Law Firm, we come to you. Hello Cartersville, if you had not been by lately, come on by and check us out. We've totally revamped the store. We've added a lot more large capacity washers for your big loads. We have 40 pounders, 60 pounders, and 80 pounders for those huge loads. If you've got large bedding, come on by and see us. We've got the machine you need from a single person all the way up to a multi-family. If you're tired of doing laundry yourself, we offer a wash, dry, and fold service where you can drop it off. A few hours later, come back, it's ready to wear. We're located at 406 North Tennessee Street. It's All American Coin Laundry. Come by and see us for all your laundry needs. Hey, David Franklin back with uh, two of our community heroes, Kelly Whitmire with the school system and Janet Queen. Who, Janet, you serve so many different places in, in Bartow County. Both y'all ladies, Kelly, you've been doing such an incredible work, not just with this crisis, but just dealing with as the homeless liaison. You get to see a lot of stuff. But uh, we've been talking about the budgetel crisis where these people got displaced because the health department closed things down and uh, gave 24 hours. And so, Kelly, the real question is, okay, what next? That's what everybody keeps calling me and saying, what next? Ladies, tell me what y'all been doing, because we were in a meeting at 9, and y'all left, and go, go tell everybody what, what we've been doing. So this morning, um, Janet and I and a couple of other community members headed over to the Quality Inn to kind of touch base with some where of some our Some of our folks are Some staying. of our folks yeah. are there. There's we, a couple other hotels where folks yeah. are, and we've been trying to touch base with as many families as we can to find out what is their plan for next week. Do they have a plan? Do they have transportation? Do they have income? Do they have family, friends? Have they started working on this? Where are they going to go on Wednesday? And that's, you got to do that family by family. Y'all right. mm -hmm. have no idea how tough that is. I mean, we've done it in Tornado Recovery. I'm telling you, that is an exhausting yes. kind of thing because you hear from those people the situations that they're in and, the, and now how do they get to work because some of them are walking to work. I mean. It, it is really disrupted everything. And Kelly, you've done something to make sure that go from the, from some of the hotels here in town all the way up to school so it didn't disrupt those kids' life, which is huge. Right. We really wanted to be sure, especially for this week, that they could at least have the stability of their school while everything else was up in the air. And so we were able to arrange buses to get everybody back to the schools that they were going to before they were displaced. And that wasn't just one elementary school, that was middle school, high school, it was kind of a broad yeah, range. And one. there were a couple of other, um, it was majority one elementary school, but there were a few other kids who were at different elementary schools. And for the most part, everybody who needed transportation, we were able to work out. And listen, God bless y'all. Thank you for all that work, because I know you've been on the phone a lot. <laughs> 
know, the, the real question is, as we go, we identified this morning, a, there's a group of community, just volunteers and team leaders and stuff from various ministries and different organizations. Okay, let's prioritize and see how do we help these people and start to begin some kind of long-term solution. Have they found something themselves? You know, do they have transportation because lack of transportation? Mm -hmm. And Janet, you and I have been working on something of uh, workforce housing. I mean, if you work at Shaw or Toyo or someplace like, can you? it's hard to afford a house here in Bartow County. And, you know, we really do have a huge crisis right now in Bartow County with lack of affordable housing. We don't have anything open for somebody who's working just a, uh, a regular job. Mm -hmm. And so that's a long-term thing that we've been working on, but there's no simple solution to that, that's is right. it? Uh, you know, uh, as we always say, this community always pulls together. And I think that that will definitely be in the plans as we move forward. But right now, it's a struggle. It's a, it's a struggle. Uh, and, you know, uh, one of the families that I have uh, met with, they have been living at Budget Hotel two years. Wow. Two years, and they have three children. So, uh, you know, it, it's very emotional, not just for them, but for us trying to help them. Because for the last two years, those children, all they had known was that one room at the Budget Hotel. So now they've been uprooted. And we, you know, we're trying to find, make sure that they have somewhere to go on Wednesday. Yeah. So it's, it's very emotional. And so, right now, presently, we are trying to, as y'all been working on it, and some others, prioritize, see what the plan is, see what are the going to needs going to be, because we don't want people, kids sleeping on the street come no. Wednesday. And fortunately, this community has really helped. Uh, and so, some of the meeting, the meeting we were in this morning, people were talking about, okay, we've had some money given here, we've had some money given here. I mean. Uh, the homeless shelter, the, there's different groups that have some money that will continue helping, but really the long-term plan is that's, it's not just this present crisis, it's that's really a, a human crisis that's been ongoing. So, you know, let me tell you now, this is long-term, and you know, what, what could you pray for about this? If I had my magic wand that we could get all these people placed in some kind of housing, and then we could find uh, a church to adopt a family, and, and we've actually seen that, Janet, where sure. a church adopt one of the Budgetel families, and they actually, it was two years ago, and they actually have got out uh, and, and are moving toward home ownership. That's right. They've got jobs, and that, that's our probably greatest success story. That, that's right. I mean, and, and those folks, we, we need to do an interview with them just so that that's they can right. tell their story. But, uh, but y'all, th this is not going away anytime soon. Our immediate goal is to make sure that we assess every family and then uh, help them as needed uh, and the ones that, that want to continue to move forward, help them mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, and trying to find, trying to find places to live, which in Bartow County right now is really hard. Yeah. It's really hard. So if you know of a place <laughs> that, uh, that somebody's wanting to rent, <laughs> call us. <laughs> I guarantee you. Right. Matter of fact, Kelly, you'd give out your cell phone if you thought somebody I would. would, would say, hey, I know where there's a place. And, and it doesn't have to be an 8,000 square foot house, would it? No. Matter of fact, it could be something very, very simple, but a place to where somebody would it. And listen, guys, I'm telling you, we're, we're, we're saying, okay, we've got to have, just like we have mentorships in school systems, We've got to have groups that will help mentor a family to help move them to where they can be sustainable, self-supporting kinds of families. And also people who are willing to, to step out and take a leap of faith with people. A lot of these families are working hard, but maybe in the past they've had an eviction from a from a time when things weren't so good, but now they've got, you know, people are working and they're doing better, but they're not able to find housing because they have evictions and people don't want to rent to you if you have an eviction or or other barriers that are standing in their way. And that's also a problem that we're facing, that even if we could find housing that they maybe could afford, that the barriers or the requirements, application fees and things like that are so steep that it's Electrical deposits. Yeah. I mean, yo, you have no idea how much money it takes to get into a place. Right. And, and these folks, they, they've been living more week to week. That's why they're in extended stay. So it is a massive kind of thing, isn't it? it is. yeah. You know, Kelly, one thing I'm encouraged about, I always am in Bartow County with the way the community comes together, but I hope this ultimately will make your job easier that when you run into things and your position as the homeless liaison, mm -hmm. that, uh, that there's a better 
even network built in our community that you'll have people that you can call. And, and we've got some great partners right now, but how do you help these people long term? Right. So. And I've, I've always said, you know, that this community, I can't think of a time that I've ever asked and it hasn't shown up. Like this community takes care of its people. And so when people are in trouble, just like what we saw last week, people come together and they do what needs to be done to take care of people. So in that you know, aspect, we are very blessed as a community. Yeah. Kelly, I made a mistake of not long ago. Janet and I were actually in Washington, D.C. talking about stuff that had happened in Bartow County. And I said, man, we're so thankful we've not had a crisis like the tornado crisis in 2011 and 2013. And now here we are with a healing crisis. I'm like, oh, man, I should, I should not have said a word. <laughs> but, uh, but listen, y'all, I, I want to thank you. And not just these two ladies. There's been a whole bunch That's of right. community heroes, businesses, nonprofits. I mean, people, you can't believe the heart of this community. I just grabbed these two because I, I know that God bless you, Kelly, because I know you... <laughs> You're tired today, aren't you? I, I am. <laughs> and, and you've got a family. I do. Yeah. And y'all, you know, serving and stuff like that. She represents, and Janet represents, kind of the heart of this community with a whole group of people. Because, I mean, there's some really, really quality folks here. But we do need you to pray about the long-term kind of thing. Because ultimately, ultimately, we've got to figure out some way to have affordable housing. I mean, workforce housing, Janet, as we call it. We've got to have some way to help people get back into transportation. And then we've got to have some way where we have some kind of mentorship and where families or churches or different groups will say, we're going to help a family mm -hmm. long term. And that's going to be budgeting and finance and everything. So, but anyway, listen, God bless y'all and God bless all of you that have a heart to help. Thank you so much. I'm David Franklin and uh, Kelly Whitmire, Janet Queen. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. We'll uh, keep you updated on this continued kind of journey that we're on. Hey, this is Joe Wilson, co-owner of Parnick Jennings Funeral Home, Cartersville's locally owned funeral home, serving all of Bartow County since 1977. The biggest difference uh, of, of our funeral home here in Bartow County, Cartersville, is that we are a locally owned funeral home. Uh, we make all our decisions right here in the funeral home. When people walk in the door, they're going to meet the owner and know that we're making decisions on what's best for the families that have placed their trust and confidence in us and the needs of our community. One thing we always say to families that place their trust in us is ask a family we have served. We want people to know that when they come here for probably one of the most difficult experiences in their life, that, that they can feel comfortable with us. On behalf of myself and all the staff here at Parnick Jennings Funeral Home, we want you to know it would be our honor to serve your family during your time of need. Please call us at 770-382-0034. We're located on Henderson Drive in Westing Commons Shopping Center. Unlike most medical clinics, we do labs right here in the office, including x-rays, saving you the hassle of scheduling yet another appointment across town. Here at Spencer Family Medicine, we accept almost all insurance plans. And we can almost always fit you in for same-day appointments. We serve patients young to old. From urgent care issues like broken bones to long-term issues like weight management and hormone therapy. Not only that, but Dr. Spencer and staff are trained in aesthetic work. So come to see us at Spencer Family Medicine. We would love for you to be a part of our family. I'm Dr. Spencer, and I approve this message. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Ready? Ready? Go. If you've been injured in an accident, call the Glenda Mitchell Law Firm. Give us a call anytime. You'll talk directly to me. Let this specialist in auto accidents fight for you. Call 770-694-1883 today. Okay. 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 Bye. Okay.
everybody, this is Gordon. Hey, Gordon. Hey, how are you? You are, we're out here at the, tell everybody where we're at, what's going we're on. We're at the Bluegrass Festival, the seventh annual Cartersville Bluegrass Festival, which the Boys and Girls Club is the beneficiary of. Great day, beautiful music, wonderful music. Uh, we're very appreciative to be included in this event. Now, the Boys and Girls Club, what exactly does that do? We serve young people ages 6 to 18 with a comprehensive, comprehensive youth development program. Uh, providing services every day after school, all day during the summer. If you're 6 to 18, you can be a Boys and Girls Club member. Uh, we have two clubs here in Cartersville and in Adairsville. Uh, we are currently building a new facility in Adairsville uh, to better serve those young people in Adairsville and North Florida. You know, I, I used to hear about the Boys Club all the time. Right. All the, it'd be in movies, it'd be on TV, it'd be in everything. Right. You just don't hear that much about it anymore. We, we're lucky that we have a couple of key partners nationwide, nationwide that being Major League Baseball. Uh, we have a lot of uh, local folks here that are involved, in, of course our board, board of directors, but we also have a, uh, a concerted national campaign now called Be Great, which uh, if you get involved in Boys and Girls Clubs, you will have every opportunity to succeed uh, and to thrive and be a contributing member of society. What does it cost to go to Boys and Girls Club? Uh, boys, our Boys and Girls Club, every club, and that's a great question, every club is autonomous. Our organization is part of Boys and Girls Clubs of America, but we're completely autonomous, okay. governed by a board, a board of directors uh, here locally. It's $25 per child per year to be a Boys and Girls Club member. That's and, not much. No, it's nothing. And, and if you can't afford that, we'll scholarship you by working around your club. Now, what can you do once you get there? You okay, I pay my $25 if the kid pays $25. Right. What is there to do once they get there? Uh, great question. Fun with a purpose. Uh, we stress we have athletic leagues, but most of the young people that enter our threshold are great athletes. It's our challenge to educate them. 98% of our kids will finish at least high school. 36% uh, of those young people will go on to some type of post high school education or training. Uh, it's fun. There's athletic leagues, there's arts and crafts, there's fine arts, there's social rec, there's prevention and intervention programs. Uh, just a real comprehensive program, but it's a safe place for our, our young people to attend. Is it supervised? Uh, well supervised, yes. We have every every staff member and volunteer that at Boys and Girls Club are certified, mandated reporters, trained, background checks. Uh, so all of our programs and activities are, are supervised. $25 a year. What a deal. Seem like much. It, it's not possible, is it? <laughs> no, not today's world. Gordon, thank you very much. Nice to meet you. My pleasure. Thank you. The Kennesaw culture is its a family way of life. We're a business that is um, Christian based. Every morning you have a Bible verse on your Qualcomm and if you're having a rough day you can just look at the Bible verse and, and think I've not got it bad as I thought I did. We do not do force dispatch. What we try to do is if a driver want to go west coast and he's happy send him to the west. If you have teams that want to go to northwest Send them there. And if you send in everyone where they would like to go, it makes them happy and make it e easier on the dispatchers. It's easy to communicate. Because of the open door policy, it makes it um, so much easier to go in and, and talk to your dispatcher, to talk to levels of management, to talk to even the owner of the company. Your home time is awesome. You would not believe uh, how you would get home time here. We don't over push our drives. We try to give them the rest and, and the time that they need to uh, make the miles and the money that they need. Right now we have a variety of tractors. We've got Volvos, uh, Peterbilts, and some Internationals. They're loaded, so you are definitely gonna be comfortable in the tractor. This is home. This is, this is absolutely home. This is where I will finish my career with, is with this company because, and sorry I'm emotional, because they've been so good to me. I've been through some personal things and um, they've been there for me the whole time. I can't, I can't praise the company enough, and it's everything from the drivers, our shop, all the way up to our management team, everybody's been there for me, and I appreciate them and I appreciate what they stand for.